let's get to the Kansas City Royals uh, veteran pitcher joining us right now. Oh, there he is. Sorry, I couldn't see him for a second. Ryan, how you doing? Uh, we appreciate you coming on. We're excited to talk to you throughout the season. What's new? Hey, what you guys, what's going on? I appreciate you having me. Crassy, what's up, man? How we doing? Ah, I'm freaking awesome, man. I don't have to play anymore. Like, this is tremendous. Like, I get to, <laughs> I get to chat with the boys, so we get to hang out in the clubhouse, and then you don't have to have the whole time, like, sleeping at night like oh, am i gonna get sent down <sighs> todd never todd never had to deal with that you yeah, you you that. understood it you went through it this off season, getting non-tendered and then becoming a big time big league free agent like you understand so this is nice to get to hang out and be with the boys yeah no we'll, uh get to see all the business sides of it and everything so uh got to go through it all but uh very excited to be here in kansas city and obviously here to talk with you guys so pumped I, I want to just steal the show just for one sec, and we'll get into some serious stuff too. But can you give me everything that you know about the Pasquatch situation in Kansas City? I don't think it's receiving enough coverage yet, and I'm sure there are a ton of national writers who have like a little comedic spin to them that are working on it. But did the Royals really hire a mascot just for Pasquantino to get on base and have him trot across near that Royals Hall of Fame deep in the outfield? If so, it's amazing. I just want to know like what everyone's saying out there because you're the first KC player that I've talked to. Yeah, you know, I think there was, there's obviously a little bit of mystery behind it because we saw the video on social media and we're like, all right, is this like real? Is this actually someone in a some Sasquatch like outfit or is it just like some security guard like in a blurry camera video? I don't know. So uh, we asked Vinny about it yesterday. I'm like, dude, is this real or not? And like, he kind of was, you know, being coy about it. So I don't, I don't really know the whole story yet. We're trying to get more information on it, but uh, there's definitely something to it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen his chainy where he's got a little Sasquatch, Pasquatch uh, chain on. So he's full dive into it. So uh, <laughs> definitely we'll have to see you know, next time he gets on base if there's going to be some kind of re reoccurrence appearance or not. Do you believe in it? Do you believe in the Sasquatch? I mean, I get it. That's not the real one on the top of the Hall of Fame. But do you think somewhere out there in Overland Park there's a Sasquatch that might get you? You know what? It's uh, it's It can be pretty dark here at night. And everywhere is like super lit up with the street lights around here. So you, you got to be on the edge. So I already heard story about like coyotes and stuff from some of the trainers around their house. So you never know. I don't know. We'll uh, We'll find out. I'm still new to the area trying to figure it out. So if I hear something, I'll let you know. Hey man, you you've been a, you've been a quick pitcher over the years. Um, how are you liking the speed up rule here with the pitchers? Um, you find anything good, bad about it, man? What what's your take on it? Hey Fraser, yeah, no, um, I, it's it's definitely been something that I think I definitely is to my advantage. Um, but I'll tell you what, I had a a longer outing and the other day I threw like I had like a thirty pitch inning, and you'll definitely feel it. You know, I mean, especially with the pitch clock early in the season. Um, those longer innings, I think you're going to realize how, how fast it speeds up. But um, I think it's been great for the game. You kind of see just how fast games are, how fast pace. And I think every guy's looking at themselves in the clubhouse, like after two and a half hour games, like we'd be in the what sixth, seventh inning right now if we were playing last year. Like we were literally all showered and changed at the three hour mark last night when we're like, okay, we'd still be like in the eighth inning right now. So it's crazy how fast it seems like it's speeding up. Um, the adjustment's real, though, so obviously you're seeing guys who are having some uh, interesting opinions on it, obviously, with uh, the calling time or getting the called strikes and stuff like that. But I think as the season goes, it'll be easier of a process for everybody. You beat the you beat the fireworks out every night. You don't have to rush out. <laughs> you know, you get them out there. It's not even dark yet for fireworks. No kidding. Well, you got to get ready, man. Do you see, do you see like a change in pitchers? off-season preparation in the sense of like, you know, before it was like, oh, I'm not running the ball home plate. I can take, you know, and you got the whole drive line videos where guys are doing velo slaps and smelling salts. And then they throw one pitch and everyone's like, oh my gosh, you hit 99. Like <laughs> now it's changing. Like, do you see off-season training changing too, where you're going to have to be cardio ready? Yeah, thankfully there was a lot of talk with that, and luckily I work out with a lot of the other Royals guys. So like Brady Singer and like Brad Keller, we all live in that Tampa Bay area in the off season. So we were all kind of discussing that a little bit, and it was a little bit like, all right, are you gonna like try to incorporate it in your bullpens, or are you just kind of like just kind of figure it out in spring training? And at that point in the off season, I think we were just kind of 
uh, like, all right, let's just work on our stuff, our craft right now, and we'll kind of figure all that in spring training. But I think, like you said, now going through it, like, there's going to be some kind of semblance of making sure, like, cardiovascularly, like, or something where you're just in a better place. So you can't just rely on being able to do that in spring training and build up. So I definitely think you're right. There's going to be some aspect of kind of seeing to make sure you're ready to go because those, like I said, those longer innings could definitely kind of catch up to you. Who I, I'm? It's been a long time since I've been in KC. Who's the strength guy in KC now? Oh, it's Stoney still, man. He's still it's doing still it. Stoney. Stoney's there, man. He's grinding it out. He he's gonna have an answer to the cardio question. Tell him that I because he has an answer for everything. Tell Stoney to relax and make sure he gets you in shape so that you can be a <laughs> starter again and not a what do you, what do you, do you call yourself a stopener? You know the starting opener when you're with the Rays. Oh, what was it? Uh, no, it was the bulk guy. You know, we were the trying bulk to find, guy. We couldn't find a really good phrase for it. It was like only the like only that. thing that like was decent, but you know, didn't have that nice ring to it. And you're not bulky at all, so that's uh, that really doesn't apply. Uh, <laughs> all right, man, cut way. it out, man. Hey, <laughs> listen, <laughs> let's switch gears for me. I want to hear about this. Um, you posted an IG uh, Instagram a while ago about opening cards. Now, we got a bunch of good uh, – between Scotty and I, Eric, starting to get back into it a little bit. Um, are you still an avid card guy? Um, if so, like, what's your best card? Like, talk to me about – when did you start as a child? I think um, cards are – you know, they're, they're back in the game now. So talk to me about that. Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't really been doing a lot lately. Um, like, growing up, you obviously you get a bunch of cards and stuff like that and um, – collecting a little bit it was actually kind of cool I was able to do with that with Austin Meadows when he was still with Tampa too so kind of able to to open up some cards with him and especially it was kind of it's kind of cool when you kind of get some cards at this when you're actually playing with guys mm -hmm. and you're able to kind of like just uh, share with them or get them to sign or um, seeing guys like get super excited about all that or but it's it, like you said man it's it's crazy how it's gotten like just talking with family or people who like we're sort of into it like when they were kids and like who've just like really revamped and got really into it now. Um, I probably need to get into a little bit more, honestly, because that like doing all that stuff, like opening cards, it's like it's kind of like your kid on Christmas. It feels like doing all of those card sets. So you need to do that more because I've definitely seen some guys around the clubhouse already doing it with who have, with their kids and everything. So that's definitely something I should be, get back into. Have you talked to Bobby Witt about cards at all? He's apparently the guru. Really? I haven't talked to him that much about it yet, but I know um, I've just seen him a lot and just kind of seen what he's been about in KC, but I didn't know he was a big card guru guy, so I'll definitely, we're going to the field here in a little bit, so I'll ask him about that for sure. Yeah, you should. I mean, you know, Bobby, I mean, he's a great, great dude, and, and sometimes, like, you got to get him going a little. Of course. Th that's one of those, right? <laughs> like, you ask, there, there's certain topics to get Frage going that where suddenly <laughs> he wakes up if we need him to. Yeah. For Bobby, if you want to have, if you want to get into it, if you, you need to make sure you have time though, like you okay, need twenty minutes or something at least with him, because he'll start. He'll all of a sudden he'll be like, he's got cards to sell you. He's going to tell you his favorites. Like he's he's really into it. So oh wow, um, yeah, good way to get the the young stud though to open up. Love that, love that. No, he's I'm been great, honestly. I'm a I'm a switch to another teammate. You've only been there for five games plus spring training. You have any good Granky stories? Because this dude, Not, I've heard, I've heard some great ones. Just um, for you, from you, from you though. Yeah, so you know how it is in spring training. It's kind of hard sometimes, just because everyone's doing so many different things. But uh, the the one story, uh, it was actually the first day I met him. We were at like the a fan the fan fest. We they flew a bunch of guys out there to KC right before spring training started, and. Um, and he was there, so like all the guys, we were all talking at the event, and uh, like he was talking to some people I didn't want to interrupt, and all of a sudden he looks over and he's like, "Oh, are you the new guy?" I was like, "Yeah, man, I, I'm Ryan. Nice to meet you." And he's like, "Oh," he's like, "Oh." The first thing he goes to me, he's like, oh, "Are you gonna hit 92 this year?" And I'm like, "I mean, uh, I mean, that's the plan, but all right, man." <laughs> like, uh, and he was like, "All right, man," and like just obviously <laughs> chatting with him and getting to know him over the time, he's been great. But it was just hysterical the first time talking with him, just going right for it, man. I love it. Did, did you say are you gonna hit 92 this year yeah. <laughs> oh man I'm, I'm not going there you know you guys done it all man i'm like i'm like first impressions are everything so i'm not gonna try to do all that hey so you went to old dominion the monarchs okay so when i played we'd always open up three we always go to william and mary and then go to you guys um 
that right field, the wind, wind was blown out just right. I don't know if you remember this. Oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not off him. I'm just saying when the wind's blowing yeah. out the right, when it's blowing out the right, all you got to do is hit a pop up. Um, how many times you give up a home run to right field saying, God uh, darn it, man, that should have never uh, happened. Man, I'm well, let me start with this. <laughs> I'm from Florida, so we got up to ODU's and I'm like Virginia Beach, and I'm like, okay, it is like. Yeah. Is it snow there when well, I'm getting recruited? Like, is it snow? Like, I'm like, no, we're right by the water, man. You don't have to worry. But it's not just be cold. <laughs> no, my it's first, cold like, as hell. Oh, man, we're just freezing, and we get snowed out my first, like, series there. When I get there, I'm like, okay, all right. But, no, like, no kidding. The wind will just blow out there. And I'll tell you what, there's times where it used to be a pitcher's park, and they put this brand-new building there in center field, like a brand-new chemistry building, and apparently the, the balls just fly there now. If you thought oh, they flew man. before – so like you go look at their stats now they lead like they're like top five in home runs every year like it's just unbelievable what guys are doing there now. Yeah, with the metal bats too. That's that's Ugh. crazy. No, thank you. Don't miss that at all. No, and then you got you got another kid coming on the way too. Congratulations. Um, you ready for it. that? You ready for that man to man defense coming up or what? <sighs> uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> two two girls, you know. Oh two no! I have my handful. Oh handful, Jesus. You know? Uh, we'll, we'll see, you know, my wife's going to be, uh, really, really relying on me there. So we'll, uh, off season, you know, like it'll be like middle of September. So I'll, all off season, you know, to try to get every, all that figured out. Oh, Kratz, you know, he's going to be like, honey, I gotta go. I gotta go run more now. <laughs> yeah. So I gotta, I gotta hit the road for a little bit. I gotta a go do cardio. a few miles. Tons of cardio. Yeah. It takes a while, you know, run out of Kratz, time. He told me I gotta run more, babe. Sorry. I gotta go. Like, <laughs> just gotta yeah. figure it out. You're gonna have you're gonna have to play for a long time too. Two girls, man. You're you're you've are, you've broken even now. There's weddings and especially Oof. you know my dad was a big leaguer. Look at me, I gotta have a big time <laughs> wedding. I mean, are you hey, already hearing all that? It. I know you're hearing it. You're already hearing it from your shoot. Your I'm daughter's saying, only are you two. That, man, you got multiple kids. Yeah, but I got I got two boys and then my daughter's ten. And she's locked in the house, so she's not allowed to date anybody. <laughs> when she's 22, maybe. Oh, yeah. All right. Not even 21. 22. Oh, 22. It's got yeah. like the, uh, I don't know, the uh, the Canadian drinking age or something. Anyway, uh, <laughs> hey, Ryan, I, I got a couple for you. So, so first off, back to Tampa Bay for a second. Give me the difference one or a million between the Rays and the Royals organization wise. And it can be in any front. It could be like, I came to KC and I didn't realize how well I can be fed or um, <laughs> this organization's got way more, you know, people behind the scenes, wh wh whatever it is. I know they're different. So I just wanted to get your take. Cause you know, Tampa Bay is so unique the way that they run and their machine runs so well that actually many other teams across the sport think that they can copy them and they can't. No, for sure. I, th I think that it's it's going to be hard just for the fact of our new manager I had in Tampa. You know, I had our uh, Matt Cotraro, our manager, and our bench coach, Paul Hoover. Uh, they both came here from Tampa. So they definitely brought a lot of those ideologies and that the culture that made Tampa so good. Um, you know, just like especially for a lot of young guys, which we have here in KC, of just, you know, just come to the ballpark, be yourselves. Don't like feel like you're walking on eggshells. You know, it's just for these guys to get comfortable really fast so they can have a lot of success. So I feel like you're able to see that already with KC just because of a lot of the young talent. So that's the one thing I've noticed. Um, but man, I mean, the easiest thing is probably having to play outdoors year round, right? Like having to get used to the elements and everything. I think there was something to to be said about never having a rain out. We have we obviously haven't had that, but like. The easiest thing I could say is just having to not have to deal with the trap anymore. But, um, man, I think it just makes it a lot easier. It just matter, you know, like you get you get comfortable somewhere so long. I was there for five years, which is, I guess, in Tampa standards is a lot longer than most people stick around. Um, so obviously, I have all those connections and those those uh, relationships that you have with like from the pitching coaches to the the strength staff, the athletic trainer. So it's really just been a matter of like getting to know a lot of them, getting adjusted and how you keep you successful, continue to, to build and like to grow. I want you to be honest. Do you feel like the Rays maybe devalued you a little bit? I mean, the one, the one time I got to catch you when I was in Tampa, you went seven shut until Jordan Luplo hit a little jam job down the line. Like, 
I feel like, yes, I understand the bulk. Yes, I understand the matchups. But I feel like your stuff and your tenacity, do you feel like you were undervalued there? Yeah, what was that? That was in Cleveland, right? It was in Cleveland, yeah. Yeah, I was – I mean, that was probably one of my best games with, between me and you. But I think it was just weird, you know. Um, like, I feel like when you first come up, like when we first did it in 18, the opener, it was more of like, okay, like getting your feet wet, like getting comfortable. Like, I get that. I got it. And then I was able to start. It was just more of like from a competitive standpoint. Like, I was like, I know I can start and to have a lot of success. And then it was just, you know, like they're very, they're very much so of, you know, this is what the numbers say. Obviously, they're very analytically driven or teams that are very right-handed heavy. We just don't necessarily like the matchup as much. So it was just stuff like that when you're like, obviously, as a competitive person and, I'm, and a competitive athlete, you're just like, oh, no, I can, I can do it. It just kind of gave me the chance. And it was kind of hit or miss depending on how everything was going. So that was honestly probably the only thing. But um, from a relationship standpoint, everything was great there. It was just kind of – just wanted to get the ball, man, every fifth day and just be able to start and show them that I could do it. And it was at times it could be kind of tough. Do you think that the Rays make it tough for other teams in terms of this is kind of like now the praise side of them? They do so much with so little resource wise, especially, I mean, mainly money, right? There, there are a lot of teams that pop up now in other spots and they're like, we want to be the Rays of the Midwest. We want to be the Rays of the Northeast, right? I'm like, Good luck. Do you think yeah. that they're setting kind of a, I won't say a bad example, but you know what I'm saying? Like they're not going to be replicated by 10 teams. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's for what they do is it's pretty incredible from all the guys that they're able to, to bring in. And then for whatever rhyme or reason for, from why they weren't successful or they didn't get an opportunity somewhere else. Uh, there's a ton of different reasons. And then they kind of come over here and you see them throw for the first time. Like, Oh, this guy's got like good stuff. I think the biggest thing that they do that makes them really successful is they put guys in situations, at least from the pitching side, because that's the only thing I can speak to, is they put in guys in situations where they can be really successful. Okay, this is a spot where we think you can do well. Um, there's not really any defined roles, I feel like, in the bullpen either. So, like, guys are always ready to go, and nothing really phases them. So it's not like you're asking a closer, like, hey, I've only pitched the ninth inning, but you're asking me to throw the seventh. So it's something I'm not comfortable with. Guys have to get really comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think that's why guys end up throwing so well because they're used to throwing in so many different situations. Yeah, talk about being uncomfortable. If you were commissioner for a day, dude, what would be like things, something you would change right away, man? There's some, I love asking this question because there's a lot of Ooh. different things. We can go one way, we can go another way. Something that you like, maybe we need more of or something that's like, Dude, we got to get rid of this like right now. So I know, I know, I'm hitting you hard with this one, but I would love to hear you were commissioner. Yeah. What would be the first thing you do? The one thing I feel like I've told guys, and like for whatever reason, it popped right in my head was changing the replay a little bit. Like I feel like they're all talking about, okay, we want to speed up the game, and then it basically gives like teams, all right, hold on, let me check that real quick. Okay, never mind, you're good. Like. And then it's like, all right, wasting time. I would love for it to be more like football where they like, you have a manager, have a flag and they have to just toss that thing on the field, you know, go off your gut. Don't even look at it. You get like two a game, something like that. We're like, all right. And I just want to see managers just chuck it and just see how, what they got. In the tank. <laughs> I think that could be so interesting. I'm like, are they going to use it? Like, you know what I mean? There's no time to really, you got between that and the next pitch, kind of like how in football you got between that and the next play. I think that could be really interesting, pretty fun to do, but Obviously, uh, I think they're they're pretty content with where the replay is right now. Nice. I want to take you. I want to take you back to 2020 playoffs. This is the inside access that we're trying to like let you know let fans into. And I haven't even told the other guys about this, but I just thought of it. Do you remember the lineup the Yankees put out there against you in the COVID season? No, yeah, it was a COVID season in the playoffs. Do you remember how many lefties were in that lineup? Probably one. What was it? Probably just Gardner. Do you know why they played Brett Gardner? Uh, either he's hitting well off me, or that was probably their like their probably standard left fielder. I feel like I always seem to face him whenever he played me. Well, since he's not playing anymore, I'll let you know. Okay. He could <laughs> see a tip, and that's why he absolutely racked you to left field okay. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I was like. <clears throat> Oh man, are you kidding me? That's that's actually kind of funny, but I'm gonna have to go back and look at this now. My gosh. 
Oh man. It was it was like it was I remember I remember he got put in the lineup and he's like, Yeah, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna <laughs> wreck this guy. And nobody else could see the tip. I don't know if it was from the left side that you could see it better. And he goes, Oh, we're gonna kill him. We're gonna kill him. I think we had three hits and he had all three of them. <laughs> It was yeah, probably for a homer too. Like I think uh, I threw a CD against them one year, and I think he had a homer off me yeah. that game. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy, like I normally handle my lefties really well. I'm like, this guy just somehow all the time, like just laying off these sliders. Don't get it. It's all making yep. sense. Come together. So there you go. Now you have more confidence going into this season. Wow. And Guardy's done, so don't worry about it. Yeah, but now, wow. now you got him thinking. Now, now the dude's gonna go back and watch every film before he gets to the ballpark. I mean, at least tell him what the heck he was doing. I mean, you told him. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, come I wasn't on, playing. Man. It's sure. probably gone now. Yeah. I mean, it's well, probably changed. But the thing is, because this this is one of the coolest parts of the game is, like, I'll, I'll work with a guy who would be like, yo, so-and-so had a tip, and I wrote it for a few years, and then he was my teammate, and I finally told him, or after he played. Like, that's one of the parts of the game that gets, like, real either oh, yeah. in the fraternity or, or yeah. out of the fraternity, it's depending nice. on – if you, it's your friend or your teammate. The Arbitron over there, he's, he's I can see his brain thinking now. Like these I just got, I just gotta look back on that now. I can't believe like normally like the Rays were pretty good about that kind of stuff just because <clears> of <throat> being so analytically driven. So the fact that that kind of sneaked through snuck through, that's kinda of funny, man. That's uh that's crazy. <laughs> the one guy too, of all people. Shout out, shout out no to hitter. Brett Weber. You know, you know, Todd. Yes, yes. Brett, Brett Weber, you can find a tip. The Yankees are both of those playing for both of those teams, like they both had very, very good. What, what are they called? Tip tellers, tip finders, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever. I don't remember. Just tippers. <laughs> tippers. They, they they find it. They find it. Once a tipper, always a tipper. <laughs> That's good though. Now you got them. So some tip well, some don't. So we'll see what happens. Hey Ryan, this was awesome, man. Really appreciate it. Um, we'll talk throughout the season, and uh, we'll we'll keep you know cracking the code on this. Maybe we'll we'll talk to Guardy in between this and, and see what the heck was going on. And he's he at least owes you like a dinner or a bottle of wine or something at this Ooh, point. Wait. <laughs> no, stuff, appreciate Ryan. that. Thank Thanks you. For